Hi, and welcome to episode number 214 of the Savvy Social Podcast. This is a show dedicated to helping passion-led online business owners and entrepreneurs learn how to use social media as a tool to grow your business. I'm your host, Andrea Jones, and I'm fiercely committed to helping you understand both the how and the why of social media marketing so that you can build community, create connection, and make your difference in the world. This show is brought to you by Sendable, which is the all-in-one social media management tool that my team uses every day to schedule and analyze our social media results. You can try them out for yourself by going to onlinedrea.com slash sendable. And I'll put that link in any of the links we talk about today in the show notes, which you can find at onlinedrea.com slash 214. Okay, so 214. Today's guest the amazing Lily Womble of Jay Brazen. Lily was a top matchmaker at the largest firm in the US. After matching hundreds, she realized that with coaching, women could become their own expert matchmaker to find better dates for themselves than anyone else ever could. Now, as the founder of Date Brazen, she's helped hundreds of women around the world build badass dating lives that lead to extraordinary relationships through unconventional coaching and transformative community. Lily, welcome to the show. Thank you, Andrea. So glad to be here. Congrats on 214 episodes. Thank that was you. A feat. Yes, it's, uh, let's see, three, three and a half years in the making now at this point. Serving the people. <laughs> serving the people. I love it. Yes, I love it too. So much fun to just pick people's brains, which is why I'm excited to have you on the show because I love your story. Like getting started with the matchmaking career and then diving into coaching. Talk us through how that all started for you. Okay. So uh, it's a winding road. My heart has always been at this intersection of the well being of women. Uh, and, and which led me down a path of like nonprofit work. And then also this passion for performing and being on stage. And I always thought those two things were at odds with each other. And so, um, I, I plunged in new adulthood into working in the nonprofit world, working for feminist organizations that were prioritizing, um, the, the well-being of women and girls, um, in the U.S. and abroad. And uh, when I burnt out from nonprofit life, I took a really sharp left turn to New York to, to try to be a performer. So to try to like, fill that sort of other desire that I had had from a young age. And as I was trying to be a a musical theater performer in New York City, I had to have jobs. I did like five jobs to to keep myself going. So I was a nanny. I was a babysitter. I was a preschool teacher. I was, I worked at a a church and a nonprofit and I lived there, right? And uh, all the while I was auditioning and I realized that A, I needed another job. I was tired. And B, I loved talking with people in an audition waiting room and I ended up like coaching them ish because I couldn't stand for them to be in their anxiety and pain before walking into this really vulnerable space of like singing for a stranger. So, uh, so I was again, looking for another job. I found a side gig as a matchmaker at the largest national firm I didn't even know it was a thing. I thought it'd be a funny story about how I was a matchmaker one day. And uh, so I I got into it. It was sort of sink or swim. I swam and uh, I went full-time matchmaking and left the the sort of performer dream um, uh, behind. And as I was matchmaking, I realized that, oh, wow, this is so cool because dating is a microcosm of every hope, joy, dream, fear, insecurity, Mm -hmm. desire that we have as humans. And so with dating, I could help women be well. So there came in this like well-being of women passion and purpose that I had always yeah. had and didn't exactly know what to do with once I left nonprofit. So uh, when I was matchmaking, um, again, got really good at it. I was the third most successful matchmaker out of 160 in this <laughs> national firm. And I also was in a really... Um, I, I, I didn't have much romantic history. Um, I was in my mid twenties and I found myself in a relationship that was deeply unfulfilling and toxic. And so I, I had so many messages that I had been fed as a young woman from Alabama 
in the patriarchal world that we live in, that I was too much, that I wanted too much, that I was too sensitive, that it wasn't possible for me to be with a man who, or a person who fully got me and loved me and accepted me. So I put myself into a box mm-hmm. and I, uh, I was giving very different advice than I was taking. Right. And so mm-hmm. I came to this breaking point, Andrea, where I knew that I could no longer put, I felt I was, I was no longer going to be in the box. I was no longer going to accept so little from my romantic partner. And when I did that, it, everything sort of shifted in my matchmaking world because I realized that I and my clients needed a deeper solution than a first date. Hmm. And so when I started to explore this concept of date coaching, it was really for myself. I was like trying to save myself. And uh, I also started to date coach my matchmaking clients, uh, you know, on the sly. And they started to find better dates for themselves with coaching than I or any other matchmaker could find for them. And so I, with them, started to build the solution that we needed to know our deeper preferences, to set courageous boundaries, to ask for what we want courageously, to show up more fully in our dating and love lives to attract more, right? And that has to do with rebuilding neural pathways about our own worthiness, which is coaching, right? So uh, about four or five years ago, I broke up with matchmaking to start building Date Brazen. And now I get to help hundreds of women around the world build dating lives that that feel more like self-care and that imbue courage. Like I get to help women feel courage, courageous and joyful in their day-to-day lives with the tool of dating. And so, um, it's the best. I love it. Oh my gosh. I resonate with your story so much, especially with this feeling of being too much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of people will resonate with that. Actually, if you're listening to this, go message Lily at day Bra- brazen on Instagram and let her know. We all feel this. This idea of, you know, wherever we're showing up in this space that we're trying to show up, whether it's dating or even social media, this um, almost like damper that we put on ourselves, on our personality, because we're afraid of what other people will think. And we're afraid of other people's reaction, especially mm-hmm. those of us who were who are socialized as women. Right. Mm-hmm. Definitely relate to that. So, you know, as you're starting your business and you're, you're diving into the, the coaching space and now you're trying to market on social media, talk to me about how this newfound kind of freedom shows up for you as you're marketing your business. It has been a journey, Andrea. It has not been the person, the version of me that you see on Instagram today. I mean, it goes without saying it was not me four or five years ago, I think four or five years ago, I was trying, I think very naturally trying to copy or like trying to do what I saw other entrepreneurs doing that I admired. And I remember like the most visceral example of this is like, uh, my first thing that I ever sold was a course because the only other coaches that I saw did courses that were like, $599 or whatever. And I launched this course, not knowing anything about launching, not knowing anything about social media, not knowing anything about building an audience. And I didn't sell a single seat. And uh, so I think that I was showing up trying to still with every stage of my growing business, I have to grow out of the idea that someone else is the answer to my problem. Yep. And so at that stage, it was like that a co- that another coach, like a business coach would be the answer. And then I had to be doing exactly what she was doing. And then the next phase of, of marketing my business was about like how to communicate and how to copyright and how to be, that took years finding my voice and being clumsy and spending. And then there was the the perfectionistic, uh, chapter. Well, that's what am I saying? I still struggle on a daily basis with overcoming perfectionism, but like spending 15 hours a week on Canva to create 
graphics that I want, that were up to my stand high, high standard when I'm not a designer, I'm not a, like just this idea that it has to be perfect to be out in the world or that I have to have really polished images. Right. So it's been a constant, like outgrowing those old stories, um, to where now I feel like I know exactly what I do. I know exactly how I help people. I, know exactly how to show up as my self, at least the self that's sitting here with you today, Andrea. And I also have help, right? Like I am a client of yours. You uh, do full service social media for me. And I think, right, that's the title. <laughs> yes, that is the title. <laughs> that is the title of the thing that you do. Because I was like, this is not, I've honed my voice enough that I can help you, your team now share my message. And, uh, uh, and I don't have to be in the weeds of it all being perfect all the time because there's just too much to say and too yeah. much to contribute to get caught up in perfection here. Um, yeah. 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 And I'm glad that you talked about some of those common issues that we all feel when it comes to social media, the perfectionism, the, the stages of clumsiness. I do feel like as business owners, we feel we, and humans, adult humans, we feel like it should be perfect, quote unquote, should be whatever. And so when we show up to social media and it's not, we end up spending our wheels trying to get there. 15 hours in Canva, we've all had those days, right? So I think it's so relatable to those people who are listening. And I love that you got support. I mean, obviously I'm going to love it because you're working with us, but it, it frees up your time to do other things, right? So you've got your podcast, you're delivering your program, um, and you're creating content in new ways. So before we get to the new content that you're creating, talk to me about what that has freed up for you. You know, I know you really really developed a beautiful program over the years, um, you know, kind of from that initial 599 course to what it is today. So talk to us about how that evolution looked for you. Yeah. So I, I talked with a coach actually in like a free consult call after that launch bombed. And she said something so beautiful to me. She was like, thank God nobody bought that 599 course because you never have to offer something at that price point ever again. Hmm. And I was blown away. I was like, what? My price, my low price isn't the reason that people will want to work with me. No, like it's all about that shedding of the idea that um, I have to do something because I saw another coach do it. So then it was about developing my skills as a one-on-one -on -one coach and one-on-one -on -one coaching a bunch of women. Then it was about developing my group program based on the, the, um, I started building actually from the beginning of date brazen, the beats of what I knew a deeper transformation looked like in a person's dating life. And so from illuminating your essence based preferences, illuminating those old neural pathways that are holding you back to then using that reflective information to build a tactical strategy so that you know exactly where to swipe, you know exactly how to put yourself out there in person, you know how to set boundaries and be courageous in your communication, then to how to reignite your dating life with power and purpose and boundaries boundaries. Then you are into like integrating these, these lessons and allowing your nervous system to catch up to the expansiveness that you have learned to lean into with asking for what you want and showing up fully and attracting more as a result. That is the process. And so um, I, I started building the Brazen Breakthrough um, shortly after starting Date Brazen. And the Brazen Breakthrough are, is a four-month experience where my clients go through those four transformative steps together in community. Belonging is one of my core values as a human and in Date Brazen. And I saw so many women struggling with isolation in their love lives, right? Like you and the Savvy Social School, I know helps so many business owners feel less alone and bring in belonging and community and support. And that's exactly what I wanted to do with my clients with the Brazen Breakthrough because most people's, like everybody is normal and nobody thinks they're normal. <laughs> yeah, we all yeah. think we're the exception. <laughs> all think we're the exception. I had a client last night who was so, all of my clients are like, not, I mean, to brag. Yes, I'm huge on bragging. To brag, my clients are the best clients in town. Full stop. They're the most awesome humans. My client last night said in our group coaching, she was like, we talked about what barriers have you created to 
feeling the way you want to feel in your dating life. And she, and we did breakout rooms and she came back to the main rooms. Like I truly, she said, and I, and I quote, I would have bet money that I was the only one in this room who had created a barrier to feeling the way I want to feel in my dating life. And so that's, and that's why we do this in community because it's important to normalize the feelings that are happening in your body and then move through them in a group. So, um, so that's, that really then like became my pillars of social media, right? My mm-hmm. program then became the pillars of what I talk about, the deeper reflective work, the tactical strategy coming together. Um, so the more I got to know my business, got to know my expertise, the easier it was to talk about it on social media and to talk about a billion different pieces of it. Yeah. Yes. I love that so much. The the idea that you're like shining a light on the challenges that we have in saying we're all normal, even though we feel like we're all somehow the exception, mm-hmm. um, which is what you're doing with your Instagram reel. So I want to talk about this because we... Um, I believe back in November of 2021, you started diving into reels Mm -hmm. and talk to me about kind of what that process looked like for you for start. And then I know you have kind of like a few successes along the way that you can share as well. Yeah. Okay. So I was very resistant. (laughs) And I just remember being on a call with you and D.O.D. Shout out to D.O.D. And I was just like, (laughs) I don't, don't tell me what to do. A, B, you were like, do reels. It's going to be fun and interesting and people are going to love it. Lily, you're great. Whatever. I was like, Andrea, don't tell me what to do. I'm so busy. I can't, I can't do one more thing. So, um, and which is a fallacy, right? Like that, that there's a, that there's a limited amount of time. I create time. I, you know, there's so much agency that I, was choosing by saying no at first. And then when I came around to the idea coming into my agency of like, okay, this gets to be on my terms because Andrea, when you said it'd be great if you did reels, reels are doing really well right now. Looking back, do I wish I had started exactly when you told me to? Yes. Right. Mm. And I didn't. And so, because I made up a story that doing reels, like I made up a story about what you meant by reels. Mm. And the story was, it'll take a lot of time. It will, the first reel that I ever created, it took me like four hours. And I thought that I had to have all these shiny transitions. And I thought that I had to change my outfit in the middle of a reel. And I thought that I had to like have different outfit, costume, jewelry. Like what, what? I remember saying to you, I'm exhausted doing reels because I don't want to change my outfit seven times in a day to perform it. You, you said just like, why do you, you don't, you can record them all in the same outfit. Like literally nobody notices. Yeah. And that blew my mind. (laughs) That blew my mind. So it was about shedding, recognizing that I was making up a story about what it meant to be online and do reels. Then realized that I was similar to how I felt a certain sort of way about asking for help. I made up a story that I should be good at this by myself and shouldn't be stressed out by it because it's easy. Yeah. Quote easy. Um, so recognize the story, like question the story with love and compassion and say like, how might that not be true? How might that not be true that I have to change my outfit seven times to be interesting? And then, so we started collaborating on some reels. Your team gave me some ideas. I never really felt connected to the concepts or my reels until one day when a client told me something so outrageous that she had heard like a piece of advice, dating advice that I found so abhorrent. And I was like, I have to make a reel about this. Took me literally five minutes from beginning to end to beginning to post. And it got 27, over 27,000 views in the next three days. Yes. See, that's what I'm talking about. The five minutes. Okay. (laughs) Five minutes, y'all. Okay, go on. And you never know, you never know what's going to hit, right? So one that you make in five minutes that you're really proud of may only get a hundred views or less or whatever. The one that you spend an hour on, maybe you get a lot of views. Maybe you don't. It's such a crapshoot. I think that my focus after doing the reels for a while 
then, and, and by the way, my following is about 1500 at the time of this recording, which we're recording a few months, maybe before it airs. So who knows where I'll be? Um, but I don't have a big, you know, 27,000 was a significant amount for me. Yeah. Um, and what I've learned about them is that you have to make them, I have to make them easy for myself. Otherwise I won't do them. Mm. Uh, I have to use source material from my own coaching to be inspired enough to do them. So I take things my clients say to me, I write them down um, in a group coaching, or I rant about something, or I am just silly, or I like, you know, I, I th that was my inspiration is how can I make it the easiest possible for myself before Reels had captions available to add them. I would create them in Instagram stories, download them with captions on, and then put them in real so that I wouldn't have to type out every, like, I was like, which parts of this make it sticky for me? And how can I eliminate that problem? Um, so, so then, and I, I realized that like, I love working with the, the online Drea team, both. And this is so personal. My voice is so personal. My face is so personal that I'm not going to let anybody script these for me. I need to be the one to be so inspired to share that energetically it feels aligned and right in that moment. So yeah. then it became about like permission to not be perfect at when I post them. Ooh. So I had so much stress about morning, afternoon, nighttime, what is the best time? And I had to release that because I don't have time to worry about it. Yep. And my job, and then it became about it's so many reels feels like so much of a microcosm of everything too, right? Of like permission giving. And so then it became about like, how, how can I trust that whether it's 80 people that view my reel or 27,000 or, you know, more than that, when that happens, how can I trust that the right people saw it at the right time for them? That it's not about, I felt so much anxiety about, oh, I didn't reach enough people, not enough people. Well, what if that, 80, if 80 people were in my house right now, that would feel like a lot of people. Yeah. So how can I frame my brain to be celebratory of the people that did receive the message when I put it out there, as opposed to shaming myself for not having a bigger reach or uh, um, a more viral reel, you know? So it just became about permission giving. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. So many nuggets. Those of you listening, I hope you're writing this down because it goes well beyond the technical aspect of a reel. There's so much stuff that we have to deal with as humans just to show up in that way from mm -hmm. making it easy to yourself to, you know, producing content when you're inspired by things that you're seeing in your business to, you know, dealing with the perfectionism of how can I, you know, craft this this without having to change my outfit seven times. So there's a lot here that really can help encourage you to, you know, try out something, even when Andrea tells you to, especially when Andrea tells you to, <laughs> give it, it a shot. Right. Right. Yes. <laughs> because then you too could have something like a reel that has 27,000 views. Um, talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, you, you, you mentioned that you create these when you're inspired. Um, talk to me a little bit about how you create the reels and kind of how you, um, how you see them fitting into your, your work day now that you've kind of mm -hmm. been doing it for a few months. So I am, I'll start with the second part of the question. I'm, I'm not very rigid with my work day. Um, uh, I'm exploring like what more structure I could add to the work day to like support myself better. And right now I don't have much rigidity. So I'm very much flowing with what feels, um, top of mind. And, uh, I, uh, also, for example, I was going on my birthday trip, um, last week and the day before my birthday trip, I was like, I, sh I would, it would be nice to record batch record some reels. And my bedroom does not have great lighting at night. And Chris was in the living room. And so I went into the bathroom. Okay. It was like 5 p.m. was the end of my workday. I went into my bathroom and I recorded five reels in 15 minutes. And, um, and I didn't put, I didn't, I put, saved them all in drafts. I didn't put any text on them. So that's how I will batch record with an audio 
specifically. And the way I do my audios is because I have a business account and I can't use like a Lizzo song if it's not somebody's original audio. I will, um, that used to feel like such a barrier. And now it's such a gift because I get to be creative with what I see. So scrolling Instagram um, becomes sort of a treat for like, what original audios will I find that I'm really inspired and excited by? And then I just save them. I go to the reels, I explore on reels, and I just save, 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 save. Even if I don't exactly know what my caption is going to be about it or what my text in the reel is going to be. I save the audio anyway, because if I'm inspired by the audio, I know something will come. Like, for example, today I, um, I used a reel video that I recorded last week in drafts, took it out of drafts. It was of Amy Poehler in the movie um, Inside Out saying, have you ever wondered what some in, what's in somebody's mind? And then it goes to sweet dreams are made of this. Do am I? So then I like, so I, I, I was like, what words am I going to put with this? What words am I going to put? Oh yeah. What's inside my head is like, I want to fuck up the patriarchal dating standards that exist. And so, and to talk about my upcoming webinar. And so then I added the text to it and then posted it. And that was that. It was like a 10 minute I recorded the raw video and then the um, the text was today and that was it. So that's my process now. Um, and uh, I know that your team would love me to be a little more consistent because I love uh, when I am consistent with reels, how people respond. People have begun to talk to me and like know me as the reels. Like friends and clients are like, wow, your reels are really impactful and fun. And they now talk to me like they, I have, I'm more in their brain. Cause like I put funny reels out there that are relevant. And then when I'm like in a cave mood and I really need to retreat and like not be around anybody or any social media, I go dark. And so I'm finding that balance, right. Of like permission to go dark because social media like dating is very hard on my, on one's nervous system. And so, and it's a, an immense amount of emotional labor too. I, I read a post by Tara McMullen um, like yesterday about the impact of emotional labor on social media if your business requires you to use social media. And an example of this is somebody yesterday posted under my reel about allowing yourself to rest. She asked this big, beautiful question that was like a big old coaching question that I talk about in my program. And so I didn't answer it right then, but I walked away and I was like, what am I going to say? And my brain immediately went to like, how can I coach her? How can I share this like five-step system to allowing yourself to rest and then getting back out there? I'm exactly what I do in Brazen Breakthrough. And then I like took a beat. I was like, okay, this is emotional labor one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> I am going to burn out again. If I answer every single comment with like a shit ton of coaching that is very valuable. So instead, I'm going to love on her and send her to my podcast. Yes. And so that was the response that I came up with. So it's so layered how to, the emotional labor of reels, the emotional labor of showing up for the comments, emotional labor of showing up in the DMs and like how to negotiate protecting your heart and protecting your time while you also serve people online. Yes. And yeah. I love Tara for this. She, um, she actually has, I'll put it in the show notes. She has a podcast episode she did with us probably about a year and a half ago, um, about her own process to content. And there is a huge lift as a business owner emotionally to not just produce their content, but to be available and like, on all the time. Um, so I like that she calls that out because it is challenging. Um, but you know, going back to your, your kind of process of creating these, I love that you batch the reels. I love that you kind of save sounds to keep yourself inspired and, and how you go through that. And, um, you know, I know that it's an evolution. I was talking to another agency owner this week about how Reels is relatively new. At the time that this is released, it'll be two years since it was a thing. So we're all still figuring this out. Um, mm -hmm. How do we, you know, show up and create content, um, and consistently, but are both and 
you know, take that space, take that time off. Um, and I mm. learned the both and from you, by the way. I say it all the time. My husband even starts saying it now. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. um, uh, Both and is such a life changer for me in my life and my clients' lives. So I'm glad glad you resonate. It's, it's, a, it's a consistent, like, it's hard to replace the word but with the word and in most communications. And that's what I ask for my social media captions is like, we don't use the word and, but. We yeah. don't use the word but in our social media copy. And that is really interesting. And like what comes up when you don't use the word but, but and you yeah. use the word and. Yes, yes. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about that too, going deeper into the boundary piece, especially the emotional lift. I know a lot of people who are coaches are, or experts in, in their space struggle with this because social media is an exchange of ideas, right? We are putting our, ourselves out there and our content pieces out there. And we have to protect ourselves emotionally, spiritually, and our business, right? We're not just doing this for fun. This is There is a business behind here. Um, mm-hmm. So what are some of the ways that you kind of set those boundaries for yourself um, and how you recognize those moments where you do need to take that step back and rest and that sort of thing. Well, I am getting better at this on a daily basis, I think, or I am trying to. Um, uh, And uh, I think that, I think that I have to give myself a lot of permission to be imperfect at it that I'm not going to be perfect at showing up, that I'm not going to be perfect at setting boundaries, that I'm not going to be perfect at resting. I think one of the biggest lessons that I've learned in the last six months was from Simone Soul, um, who uh, she, she has the Joyful Marketing Podcast and her work is really, you've heard me talk about her. Her work has really changed my life. And she talks about this um, idea that rest feels like shit. If we are addicted to work. Yes. Yes. Isn't that so true and real? It's like, I expect rest to feel luxurious and wonderful. So why, when I take a nap, do I feel like I'm a bad person? Mm -hmm. So really it's the both end of like, yeah, rest is necessary. And it probably is going to feel like shit for the first couple of times or many times that you try it. And so in terms of social media, I don't have any notifications on ever. I, uh, I rely on your team to help me, um, answer comments then some, and, and I answer my own DMS because I find that very personal and I want to do that. Um, and, uh, that's a boundary that I, those are boundaries that I set. I also, um, will, what other boundaries do I set? I mean, I don't have notifications on any form of client communication. So mm-hmm. I don't get notifications on my phone when a client emails me or voxes me. Um, and I have set office hours that I follow. Uh, I also use Slack instead of email generally, just so that I can keep all communications there. And I have like Slack login time to talk to my clients between mm-hmm. sessions. Um And then I think the biggest boundary that I'm sort of trying, that I'm learning in 2022, Andrea, and you'll, I don't know how you'll feel about this. You'll probably laugh because we've been through now like six or seven launches together. Yep. And I will tell you that I burnt myself out so hard in 2021 because I Mm -hmm. thought I had to be launching. I felt so much scarcity. I thought I had to create a course, the course, right? It was like so many shoulds. And in 2022, I really want to shed the shoulds and have more fun, which means fewer launches, which means more ahead of time planning. I hired my first employee. I had contractors, but I hired my first employee this past six months. So there's a lot of shedding the shoulds and also getting more support both and at the same time. Yes. Oh, I'm here for the fun. I'm definitely here for the fun. And I think that shows up. Yes. I think, you know, especially when it comes to creating content, that's so, um, it could put you in such a vulnerable place like Instagram reels, you know, the fun piece is, is almost a necessity at that point. 
You know, because if you are feeling all of the pressure, and I will be the first to say I struggle with this too with my last launch. I had I wanted to post every day reels. And um I am like the queen of ideas, could not think of a single thing to say because I was on the edge of burnout, right? So it happens to the best of us. Um, where you know, we when you when you overpack your schedule and you lose sight of the fun element. Um, it shows up in how you show up in your marketing, in your business. So I'm here for the fun. I love it. I can't wait to see it. Um, so for those of you who are listening and you want to work with Lily further, you're curious about the Brazen Breakthrough. Um, we do have a free gift for you. It is the three step guide to making dating feel like self care. Lily, can you tell us a little bit more about that? I would love to. So when people hear me say dating gets to feel like an act of self-care, I see a lot of like, what? Like, no, it's not. Like that's just doesn't even compute for people both. And I know that as dating is a microcosm of every hope, joy, dream, fear, insecurity, desire that we have as humans, that the way we date matters to our overall well-being. So why can't dating feel more like an act of self-care? And I have three steps to, to make it feel more nourishing right? Because dating, sometimes therapy doesn't feel like good in the moment, like a bubble bath does. And therapy can be supporting you for the long term, for the future you. Similar to how coaching might not feel like a bubble bath in the moment, it gets to be a support for your long term vision of your future. And so that's what I mean by self care. It's not an instant fix. And it's a long-term setup for your future and taking care of your future self. So in these three steps in this guide, it's basically a gorgeous workbook slash journal that I have crafted to help you learn how to brag in your dating life, to bring more, uh, attract more goodness into your dating life, to learn how to take up more space. You learning how to practice self-compassion in your dating life, and then also how to shift to the mindset that you are for the few, not for the many, to cut down on wasted time playing the numbers game and really get into the beautiful pocket of I am worthy of what I want and that I get to ask for it. And so this guide, this workbook that I, I want to give your listeners who are dating, and honestly, you know, if you're not dating and you're single, this will work for you too. You don't have to be actively going on dates to use this to fuel yourself. Um, and I hope people download it and have a good time with it and, uh, and let me know how it goes. Yes. Grab it for yourself. I mean, I would even say if you, uh, even if you're in a, in a, a, a partnership, <laughs> yeah. check it out. <laughs> Cause I learn stuff from this all the time. Like just mm-hmm. being like, getting to see the behind the scenes of your brand, I'm learning about things like the both and, and, you know, not feeling like I'm too much. So I think it works for everybody, but I'm biased. Well, I also, I also think it works for everybody. And you get put on my gorgeous email list where I talk to you about dating as an act of self-care every single week. And so the coupled, our coupled friends might, you know, might not want weekly emails about their dating lives, but maybe they do maybe, and maybe they do. Yes. 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 So everybody wants this and say, (laughs) everybody jump on, jump on board. And those feminist, gorgeous, single people who resonate, definitely dive in, definitely dive in. Lovely. I'll put that in the show notes, onlinedrea.com slash 214. Where else can people connect with you, Lily? Obviously on Instagram at date brazen. Um, shoot me a DM. Let me know how you liked this episode, what resonated with you. And uh, also on my website, datebrazen.com, we open the Brazen Breakthrough three times each year. And so when you listen to this episode, if you're interested, you can uh, get on the wait list at datebrazen.com. Perfect. And like I said, all those links will be in the show notes. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Lily. This has been such a great conversation. Thank you, Andrea. And thanks to all of our listeners. It's because of you that we remain in the top 100 marketing podcasts on Apple Podcasts. So definitely keep listening, subscribe, share it with a friend, give us a five-star review. You can do that both on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Uh, next week, I have Abby Jean and Nate on the show. We're going to talk about going viral on social media. It's not all it's cracked up to be. Uh, so we'll be diving into that conversation next. I'll see you then. Bye for now.